Matthew 24 states, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Note, this endurance is only possible, only possible if you have the faith of God's elect, spoken of in Titus 1, verse 1. The faith of Jesus Christ, which only the elect have, will endure, because Jesus is God, and God is almighty and eternal. Speaking of earthquakes, have you noticed the entire arc of fire is having a swarm of earthquakes presently, according to Dutch, Dutch uh, sense. February 20th through the 25th and March 25th could be important potential earth change dates to monitor. I do believe there is a coming one world government. Um, Italy has dropped into recession. Euroland's economy is shrinking. The full Greek bailout may not occur until after the April Greek elections. Greece's odds of, uh, Greece's odds of surviving as a member of Euroland are less than 10% at this point. Chaos in Greece is accelerating. Greece would benefit from following Iceland's example. Default, take your medicine and then recover. India is increasing its economic ties with Iran. Egypt claims the United States directly nonprofit, uh, rather the, the Egypt claims the United States directly funded nonprofit organizations inside of Egypt for the specific purpose of creating chaos last year and overthrowing Mubarak. Note, well look what the United States did by invading Iraq under false pretenses. The same is true of Libya. The U.S. is aggravating much of the discord in Syria and still entrenched in Afghanistan and about um, to try also gain, and they're trying to gain from Iran's crude oil. All one has to do is follow the big money interest and accept the big banks that the big banks run the U.S. government and military. And the U.S. funded the now ruling Egyptian military to the tune of $1.5 billion a year of U.S. taxpayer money. The president of the largest French bank, Societe Generale, in an interview with a Switzerland newspaper, Les Temps, talked about the shadow of, American, of an Americanization of finance. In Euroland, we are moving toward a collapse of the global banking system from which, arising from the ashes, will be a global one world currency and order? Question mark. This seems to be taught in Revelation where nobody can buy or sell without the mark of the beast. This means the true believer or Christian will be killed or martyred for his or her faith. Most churches err on their eschatology by teaching a premillennialism and literal 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth. The Bible doesn't teach a secret rapture. The Bible does teach the second coming of Jesus Christ which occurs on Judgment Day after, listen now, after a period of intense tribulation. See 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 6, which warns us as professing believers not to sleep as do others, but to watch and be sober. This means we must be alive spiritually, for many in the church and out of the church think they are alive to God and on their way to heaven, but little do not know that the devil have tricked them with a false faith, that is, a dead or demonic faith. When Jesus explained this parable to his disciples in Matthew 13, 36-43, he indicated the time that the harvest will take place. He said that the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Uh, to preclude any idea of a partial harvest before the full harvest, the Greek word santalia is used. Verse 39, the word end is translated from the Greek word santalia. The spelling is S-U-N-T-E-L-E-I-A, meaning full end. According to Young's analytical concordance, santalia, or santalia is only used six times in the New Testament. It always designates the judgment day, that is, the end of the world. The use of the Greek word santaleia in each of these verses absolutely precludes the possibility 
of the righteous being taken out of the world before the end of the age. And that's from Lorraine Bettner, pages 168 and 69. I believe it's from his book, The Millennium. Does the Bible teach a coming one world government? I believe it does if you read Revelation 13, which seems to picture a political power that engulfs the entire global system. And he makes war with the saints to overcome them. These saints are on earth during this time. They are not raptured from the earth. One of the, most, or one of the foremost authorities on the international bankers that control the world is Dr. Carol Quigley, professor of history at the Foreign Service School of Georgetown University. He has taught at Princeton and at Harvard University. His classic book, Tragedy and Hope, published in 1966, explains the history and purpose of this international network of bankers. I think Dr. Quigley, uh, Carol Quigley may have passed away, I'm not sure. I haven't been following his writings, but you can check them on, on, on Google. Quigley states, the goal of this international network was to establish a one-world financial system under their control. He writes, and I quote, the powers of financial capitalism had another far-reaching aim, nothing less than a world system of financial control in private hands to dominate the political system in each country and the economy of the world as a whole, unquote. Quigley says, and I quote, I know of the operations of the network because I have studied it for 20 years and was permitted for two years in the early 1960s to examine its paper and secret records. That's on page 950 of his book. He goes on to say that he has no aversion to its aims and only believes the network should be known because of its role in history. But the network wishes to remain unknown, he says. Believers must be awake to righteousness and alert to their surroundings. Obey those in authority insofar as they are following the word of God. But use discernment, for there are many who think we are to obey all rulers and political powers regardless of what they say or do. No, this is making the state absolute to do so. Do not use Romans 13 as a crutch for absolute obedience to the state. To do so is to make a god out of the state and to make them Lord. The early Christians never did that. They claimed that Jesus Christ is Lord, not Caesar. Nowhere is unchecked civil disobedience required in the Bible. To give absolute obedience to the state is to make the state absolute and to practice idolatry, which violates Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The Christian does what is right, not necessarily what is politically correct. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21.